my friend, Dr. Phil Myers, D.C. Dr. Myers is a chiropractic physician living and working in my hometown, St. Louis, Missouri. If you want to get started with Dr. Myers, there's a simple, non-threatening way to do it. You make that first phone call for that first private no-charge consultation. Call his office, set it up at 314-878-6868. Good morning, doctor. Good morning, John. How are you this morning? Well, looking forward to a busy, productive day and and, and wondering when spring is really going to be here. 31 degrees at my place this morning. How about you, sir? Yeah, I just scraped uh, ice off my windows this morning. Crazy. It is. It is. Uh, I'm looking at the forecast, and it doesn't look too promising, but um, I'm, I'm holding out hope that we'll get some warm weather soon. So oh, yeah, what direction be, you want they, to don't, they don't just be balmy and hot, and they'll be like, oh, my God, it's hot. Yeah, go, <laughs> well, we've had several, you're right, Doctor, we've had several springs. We go right from furnaces to air conditioners with about five days in between. Oh, yeah. I remember living in Ohio, and literally it snowed on the night. The next day it was 90. I'm like, okay, that was just schizophrenic. <laughs> Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Doctor, we've had some interesting conversations. We're getting some uh, 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 comments, very favorable comments, about the directions our conversations go from other healthcare professionals. What direction would you like to go this morning, sir? I mean, the conversation on what is vitalistic medicine all about is the, is the conversation that. Uh, we really have been able to focus on and uh, has been such a liberating experience. Because uh, here's the thing. it's Again, we're not comparing one versus the other, saying that one's bad, one's good. But here is what vitality is all about. And the coolest part about talking about what is vitalistic medicine really all about is that you realize that this stuff has been around for millennium. And literally, for thousands and thousands of years, vitalistic medicine is the, is the system that has been the most dynamic and influential healing system that we have on this planet. And that we're now in this time, in this place, re-owning our history and re-owning our true natures once again. And you're starting to see that people are waking up to their reality of what is possible for them, whether it be in a business model or a... uh, a, an inspirational or meditative model is there's an awakening of who we are as human beings. And th- the people that I have been uh, really attracting into my client, into, as, into my clientele have really shown me uh, this true uh, reality of awakening is a lot of the clientele that I've been attracting here into my clinic have already woken up. They've already uh, done the mental, emotional, bodies, your subconscious mind uh, work, realizing that they are the lead, they are the captain of their ship, that they have all the potential power to create anything and everything that they want in their world within their health, within their finances, within love and relationships, and within their own experiencing of this life in their experience, period. And what they're realizing is that even with that awakening, there's the issues in the tissues that have been buried deep, deep, deep down inside their body that has that is literally locked in the neurology, into the neurology of the reactionary system that has they, they had built up to protect them when they were asleep. And even as highly as consciousness as they are, it's like how do you get through those issues in the tissues that are creating my endometriosis, my cyst, 
the irritable bowel, the diabetic, the diabetes, the heart issues, the broken heartedness, the headache, the migraines, the depression, the rashy skin, the um, you name it, the addictions to cigarettes or porn or alcohol or. Um, bad relationships and arguing and hostilities and just blah, 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 blah. I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on and on right. with these issues and the tissues create. But it's the thing is, all that they are is the issues and the tissues that you've buried deep, 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 deep down inside that's stuck within some tissue of the body, bone, muscle, ligament, tendon, organ, or bone, or neurolo- neuro- 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 neurological. And that's basically what it is. And these clients of mine that are now showing up are realizing, wow, once they get to tap into releasing the protection grid that's stuck in the neurology, like literally, what's the protection grid? It's the tight muscle. It's the trigger point. It's the... Uh, the way you look at food, the way you eat, the way you talk, the way you love, the way you uh, speak, uh, all the way you see yourself in the mirror, how you hold yourself up in posture and uh, in action steps. When you start releasing that protection grid and you start feeling safer, open, and vulnerable, to experiencing the experience of a new experience of life, the healing, the recovery, and the getting you out of fatigue that happens so that vitality runs through you. And that's the whole essence of vitalistic medicine, is this system is already always in you, moving you to your highest potentiality, period. It's you already got it. It's the things that you that are that you keep in your in your biosphere, in your energetic realm, in your mindset, in your physiology and biology and action steps that keep you in your protection grid that disallow that already always moving system of vitality to actually run and move you through the body. And they're starting to realize that when once we release this protection grid and open this vulnerability and safety, start really showing up in the world, in their life for themselves and then for themselves and to others, it's like, wow, total cool responses. And it doesn't matter where you are. And like People are here like, okay, oh, this sounds really cool. It doesn't matter where you are. You, you're a human being. You have the vitalistic potentiality in your body mind because that's who you are already there. It wasn't something that showed up one day and a part of you has it, a part of you doesn't. You are that vitality, period. And owning that expression and experience through your experiences is what vitalistic medicine is all about. And it is, and people are really starting to wake up to it. I'm even waking up more to it. I mean, I live this every day, and as I'm, as, as I'm experiencing the vital, vitality within my own life, the vitality within my client's life is the experience that I'm having for them and that they're having for themselves is just growing and growing and growing. And I myself am feeling and experiencing the vitality uh, of it all. And it's a great thing to see that happen for people uh, in every wake of life. So uh, the vitalistic model is a model of understanding who you are. We forgot who we were. I mean, you can go into history and see where it all went downhill. Whether we were Actually, Dr. Different- there's, a, there's a book titled Mankind in Amnesia by oh. Dr. Emmanuel, yeah. Emmanuel Velikowski, uh, which is not 100% related, but somewhat related to what you're discussing, sir. 
That's cool. Mankind in Amnesia. I like that a lot. Right, right. Um, when did he write that? Uh, well, Dr. Velikowski wrote several books in the 1950s and 60s, but his and I don't want to spend a dwell on this a long time. But uh, traditional archaeology, as we learn it in school, teaches us that the farther back you go in in, our, in human history, the more primitive humans are. When in fact, it was the complete opposite. It's exactly the opposite. You find the farther back you go, the more sophisticated mathematics engineering and language you find as opposed to more primitive in fact the ancient mayans were doing mathematical calculations to 10 decimal points just as one example yeah yeah and, that, and that's it's really true it's like that whole uh concept that uh we were getting smarter uh, through our through this like, yeah we have really awesome technology now but the right. technology back in the day I mean, that's, and that's the thing. And here's, that's what I'm talking about, is we're re-owning our power. And so if we're re-owning our power, I'm glad you brought this up. If we're re-owning our power, if we're re-owning our vitality, then, and if, but if we have a mindset and an, a, a belief structure that we came from a primitive system, that was less sophisticated and didn't uh, have uh, great understanding of consciousness and uh, mathematics and understanding of how the universe worked, then it's like, well, what am I re-owning? My stupidity? My animalistic nature? No, you're owning your, your, what is really in you because, like you said, if you go back in history, you realize... We were more sophisticated. We had more technology. We used our higher consciousnesses at such a level that we're we're considered now less primitive, more primitive than they were back in the day. And what we're doing now is we're reawakening that power of the consciousness that is our vitality. And we're seeing sickness and disease as just a symptom of the, the lack of knowledge and the lack of experiencing the experience of our true nature. That's the disease. And that's what got our agriculture's all screwed up. That's what got our air all screwed up, our water screwed up, our plants screwed up the way we see relationships and love and connection with ourselves and others all screwed up. And that's what disease is all about. And it's funny. I mean, I had a, a new client come in here the other day, and she has an- wrist, wrist issues, ankle issues, sore muscle issues, can't lose weight. And the overall, fix, the overall system that was basically not firing properly in her vitalistic nature was, and the, the, the protection grid was, a broken heart. She literally had been living her life as a broken-hearted person because she's a true free spirit. And you know the free spirit, not the hippie free spirit, but a true free spirit. I mean, really true and free. And her whole entire life was told that her nature was a pathology. That her being a free spirit was something to be treated and that didn't belong in this world. And so what happened? She owned the lie and became the rebel in order to be free from the scrutiny Instead of owning her freedom in her spiritual nature, that then allows her to really tap in and own her true vitalistic nature. And what happened with the path out, what happened with the lie is she ended up uh, doing things to herself and to feel free to do things that would express her freedom, but then created more of that protection grid and more of the issues and the tissues that are buried deep, deep, deep down inside that created 
pathological inflammation, swelling, redness, tenderness, and pain, decreased range of motion, decreased brain function, decreased uh, movement function in her body. And then she came to me with some type of issue that's like, I, I, I've been working, I've been trying to get rid of this my whole life. But here's the problem. She could never have gotten rid of it because it's part of the protection grid of the system that she had built up, built up that uh, kept her in her rebel state instead of really owning her true nature and that every, what everybody had taught her as a child and through her adult life that her free spiritedness was a pathology, which is completely a lie. It was, it's, that, it's, that, it's that reality that we're tapping into and i know i know right now that i'm talking a mile a minute and i am expressing language and concepts and uh things that are way out there but this is you how are, you have to talk this is kind of to... Have, this is kind of where you have to go well, to exactly. bring people back into the to the nature of things exactly we got a break coming up called of April visiting with Dr. Phil Myers. Yes, you can indeed get started very easily and simply. Make that first call for that first no charge private consultation. Call's office set it up at 314-878-6868. Well, doctor, I know that you know, your your opening statement uh, has a lot of esoteric uh, things in it on one hand. On the other, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to wake up and smell the coffee. Uh, just to follow up on something I said earlier, uh, you can go to your local supermarket and most likely find uh, bread made with the grain spelt, S-P-E-L-T, spelt. We didn't know this until recently, doctor, because we couldn't know it. But uh, first of all, spelt's been grown, the same spelt, the same grain that we know for at least 6,000 years with no changes. We also found out only... 20 or so years ago, that spelt is a genetically modified organism. So uh, here we are, learning that our ancestors uh, 6,000 years ago were growing a genetically modified plant. Now, we didn't have the technology to do this 50 years ago. Um, Sometime in the last 30, 40 years or so, us modern human beings figured out how to create a genetically modified organism. And here it's been in front of us all this time, uh, the grain spelt. So we're, uh, we're waking up to our history and, and uh, learning a lot. And uh, if you're having trouble, ladies and gentlemen, understanding what, what Dr. Uh, Phil is telling us, uh, maybe you need to read a book or two. What do you think, doctor? There are a lot. There are this, this, Understanding of vitalistic medicine, uh, I mean, within the chiropractic profession, uh, we call them the green books, uh, and the green books are books written by B.J. and D.D. Palmer, uh, the developer and creator of chiropractic, that, uh, or modern chiropractic, uh, that uh, explains the aspect of what they call the innate intelligence. And if you look at it now, you have all this stuff coming up within understanding of quantum physics, quantum mechanics, uh, Einstein's field theories, uh, Nicene Hermine's understanding of that field theory and the black hole uh, theories uh, with the fractals and the holographic effect of the universe and how that affects our cells. You have Bruce Lipton, who took that into cellular biology and showed the receptor sites on the cells and how they receive and perceive information, and they have a consciousness level to them. You have Candace Pert, before she died, uh, write the book Molecules of Emotion that shared that the body is the subconscious mind, that the biochemistry of the body affects the mind and and the neurotransmitters of the brain and how we think as well with the mind affect the neurotransmitters and affect the gut systems of the body, that all of this stuff is coming together. You have Deepak Chopra uh, and uh, Wayne Dyer, before he died, uh, explaining these systems of consciousness, of body awareness, of body-mind connectivity, 
And if you look at all of the literature from what I think from like the green books to these uh, major um, writings from these awesome scientists and spiritual teachers on the planet, you realize they're all talking the same language. They are. I mean, it's the exact same language. Doctor, a little coaching here. I'm going to be your coach for just a moment. I'm at your website, sir, and I went to the book section. Uh, I found that there's really nothing there, sir. No, there is not. Uh, that's, that whole site was taken down uh, because of the uh, because of what Amazon had done. We're redo- like I think we talked about this a couple weeks ago. We're redoing our entire website. Okay. It is going to be a website that literally nobody has ever seen well, in the healthcare field. That. We have a prospective launch date. Uh, we are hoping by the end of May. It is a, like I said, this is a site that nobody has ever seen and explaining and showing how vitality runs and works through the body uh, and how you can tap into that, what well, is available for away. you. Six with weeks that, away. With that? Six weeks away. Hopefully. Absolutely. We got a break. So let's continue, Doctor. So, so yeah, they were, they were all speaking the same language. So all these writers, all these uh, healers, uh, facilitator of healers, spiritual teachers, scientists, um, were are all speaking the same language. And it doesn't matter. And this stuff, uh, I mean, just in terms of modern uh, literature, uh, from basically 1895 to the present time, I mean, so that's a pretty long span of time, and uh, we're we're at least you're in one to three generations away. Is this is this is now, and uh, for anybody to say differently that that this type of stuff isn't true anymore, honestly, you have to wake up and sh- and see that. There's so much more out there than what you're being shown, that it's not the lack of anything that you have the power in you. Right. That's basically what I'm trying to say. And that this is, uh, this is available to you in all ways, shape, or form. And I discovered this when I was going through school. And just the just mere fact of... Um, Going from strength and conditioning where it was like, okay, body only. It's like realizing, wow, you have this amazing mind that if you, and you always have these catchphrases uh, in workout gyms, and a lot of one of the biggest ones from our school, which was quite, uh, uh, quite revolutionary, was just, I can, I will, I must. And we had, the, we had a talk on the other day versus uh, talking about, I can't, but, and I'll try. Well, you'll never try, you'll always try to do something and never get there because try to stand up, you're never going to stand up because you're always just trying. Uh, If you're telling yourself you can't do something, then you never will, and but always negates what you just said prior and uh, takes away what what you're then working on accomplishing. So... We had this phrase, I can, I will, I must. And that brought me into the understanding of, wow, what can just my utilizing of my language do for me in terms of my power grid and from a strength conditioning standpoint? And we realized just from just saying I can't do something, our athletes want to be able to do it. They'd fail every single time. And then I, then I realized through kinesiology and understanding of words affecting the neurology of your muscles, that when you say you can't, it literally creates an interference pattern, which is then, i.e., the issue in the tissue, that shuts down your muscle contractile tone. You lose all tonicity in every single muscle fiber of your entire body, organ system, and vibrational frequency of your mind. When you say you can't, and you're literally allowed, you shuts down. And I would show that to people every single time 
when we'd work out, they'd say, I can't do them. I'm like, well, okay, I'll see you later. I'm like, well, where are you going? I'm like, well, you just told me you can't do it. Yeah. But you're here to train me. I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to train you something now. Well, well, Doctor, one of the huge life lessons I learned uh, was in high school that uh, we weren't allowed to say, I can't. Uh, if you want to play football and be on the field as opposed to being on the bench, you weren't, uh, that, that wasn't, those words weren't tolerated by the coach. They simply were not tolerated. No, absolutely not. And sports, you really get that concept. At the same time, and with it, respond. It goes to how every uh, aspect of your life can be. I mean, from school, if you're saying, "Well, I can't pass this test," I can't read this; it's too difficult. Uh, then you're literally shooting yourself in the foot in your ability to do anything. That's right. And you can do something more than you're doing now, and. Uh, Changing that belief structure is very important. So it came up to understanding kinesiology. And then I had a, I don't, I don't know, I, it, this isn't like this happens to everybody. <clears throat> but you also, this, is, this, is, this does not happen to everybody. What happened to me is when I was going through graduate school, and I chose the path to become a chiropractor, I was very blessed to be not only being taught amazing skills to be a great doctor, I went through a process of self-discovery and through teachings of quantum physics, through Candace Pert's work, Bruce Lipton's work, and many, many teachers. And it was it showed up in front of me. And I almost didn't even have a choice to look at it or not look at it. It was always in front of me as if if it was supposed to be there. And a lot of my clients always ask me, like, where did you learn all this stuff? Like, it was kind of, it was self-study. Here at the same time, it was supposed to be that self-study. And, uh... And here's, it's, 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 this happens to every single one of us. Every single one of us has things that are showing up in our world that are sh- telling you and sharing with you and helping you understand where you should be and can be going to create and where you actually get to go in the world. And it's very clear once you really start looking at it, and I'll tell you a story. I might have told this story before. I was living in Toledo. I was driving down um, Reynolds Road, and I was passing a Barnes and Noble that I pass all the time. <clears throat> and I just and I got and I got this feeling. You need to go into Barnes and Noble. Like okay, so I drove into the parking lot walked into the store, and I was being led to the right. And so I walked to the right, and I didn't know what part of this this store, this Barnes & Noble was because I really never walked, I had never walked into it before. I never walked into it before. Right. And so I walk in there, and there's this little kid, probably about, three, two and a half, three years old, I don't know, I didn't see any parents at all around. And I saw this little kid, and this kid is just pounding on these books. I mean, like like hitting them, right. like as loudly as you can possibly see. I walk over to it, and it was this whole section on metaphysics and quantum physics. And... I kind of like, okay, that's interesting. And I looked over, and the kid was gone. I'm like, looking around. I didn't see a parent pick up the kid. I looked around the corner. That kid was gone. I didn't see any other people around. 
that kid was gone, and there was nobody there. And here I was standing in the bookstore that I had never really ever walked into before, especially this section of this bookstore. And it's filled with metaphysics and quantum physics material. It was like, okay, obviously this is going to be part of my life. Right. And I was at least acute, uh, aware enough in my life to realize that that was a significant moment. And from then on, understanding that this is where things need to be. And this, is, this doesn't just happen to me. This happens to every single one of you and every single one of us. We have guides. We have support teams that are all around us at all moments, at all times, following the vitality of our body to share with us where we can be going in the world and where we get to go and what we get to do and why we're here. And a lot of the lessons and disease functions that happen in the body honestly, are about and come from when we're not living our purpose. Because there's a, there's a, they said there's a resistance pattern that's built in you as well to keep you on track. And the more you live off track, the more you're off target, the more you're off line, you literally shows up. What literally shows up in the world is dysfunction, disharmony, disintegrative energy, mind mind issues, body issues, in uh, all these different types of things. The more you're off target, the more you're offline. Uh, that happens, and when you're completely off target, completely offline you really create in your world and the world around you a lot of disharmony. I mean, great, great disharmony within the system. And uh, uh, it just, it, it happens. Whether, and here's the thing, a lot of times it's your parents' job in the beginning to recognize your talents and your gifts. Right. And to guide and support you in your growth and development, in your vision, mission, and purpose. And they did this way back in the day. I mean, uh, my, my one of my uh, my coach and uh, my one of my spiritual teachers. She always tells me this. She's like, Phil, if you were born 500 years ago in China, you would have been taken and put into the hills of the monastery. Because of your, because of what you uh, bring to the world, but that doesn't happen in today's society. You're supposed to go to school, and then you, you have to go to college. And then you got to get a job, and then you're supposed to get married, and you're supposed to have kids. And you're supposed to, you're supposed to, supposed to, supposed to just do all these things. No right. one looks at your true nature and helps you develop yourself in who, and what you're supposed to be anymore. And a lot of times, kid diseases show up when that incongruency shows up, not, not disbarring uh, p- uh, pollutants in the world that create the, the 200-plus toxins that are in the child's bloodstream and neurological system before they're even born. Again, whose responsibility is that? The generation currently that's responsible for building a generation that is beyond powerful and beyond measure. But is this current generation doing that? No, we're way off target. And none of us are taking responsibility for what we're doing to the world. It's all holographic and fractal. What you're seeing in the world is happening in your bodies, and what's happening in your bodies is happening in the world. We really need to wake up. And when you're talking vitality, you're talking collective. And when you're talking collective, you're talking everybody. And when you're talking everybody, you're really talking everyone. That something that you do really affects the world. Uh, I mean, we've seen stories. I mean, every Christmas, The Wonderful Life comes on TV, right? That's right. And what was the story of A Wonderful Life? Uh he says, oh, probably everybody would be better off without me. That's right. And then he Wish. saw what the world was like without his little bit of love 
and connection and support. And we do that every single day here. And just that little smile that you give to somebody, that little gesture, that little connection, being on target, acting out of love, acting out of connection, compassion, putting a little bit of energy into somebody else in connectivity as if they're yourself. When you also see yourself as truly loved, because you're truly loved, a lot of stuff happens. It does, and I I see these things take place all the time, Doctor, in my own life. Oh, we all do. But here's the thing, when we all do, and then we see sickness and disease in ourselves and show up in other people, And we almost throw out the baby with the bathwater. Almost, but not quite. Almost, but not quite. (laughs) And the more you start understanding and living your vitality, the vitalistic systems of your body and mind, the more you are able to truly own your power. And uh, and stresses and traumas really tear that up. It really can tear that up. Absolutely, Doctor. We got a caller and hold here. Got a break coming up. Stay tuned. We'll get with this call. Be right back, Doctor. Here's our caller, John in Arlington, Texas. Good morning, John. Hello, Doctor Myers. Good morning, John. Good morning. I have a question concerning this. What is, is there a relationship between all the principles that are going that you've been discussing and uh, quantum mechanics? Oh, absolutely. Here and here's and here's the thing. Uh, from a quantum mechanic standpoint, if you look at the human skeleton, the human skeleton is designed in many ways, shapes, or forms to first off be. It, it's highest state of center of gravity. So their center of gravity is really, really, really supposed to be very low and really help you have a gravitational hold on the world. It's also designed to have its highest movement potential where it's, it, the potential for movement is infinite. And that's just the design of the skeletal system alone and the biomechanics of the skeletal system. And then when you look at the quantum side of it, you you actually realize that the design is a tetrahedral, uh, 144-faced tetrahedral grid. And so when you in, you look at that, and that's related to the uh, quantum field theories of Einstein and the newer... Um, aspect of that through Nicene Haramine and his work with uh, the tetrahedral 144 phase grid. And so these, these, these similarities on how your skeleton and how the grid is created for infinite potentiality within the vitalistic outlook of movement, expression, and experience of the world it's, it's pretty self-evident that we're all made within the same structure as the created energy that we all are. So, yeah, the similarities are endless. And that's just a small, uh, small window into how amazing our bodies and our minds are created uh, just within just looking at the skeletal base alone. Mm. Well, and, it, 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 it's, uh, it's awesome. Also, there's something about, you mentioned generational, sort of uh, passing down generationally. Uh, you know, Natasha Campbell McBride, Dr. McBride, the, um, the GAPS diet mm-hmm. guru. Well, she says that uh, having, having to do with, uh, you know, gut flora, he says that the abnormal gut flora that's being passed down that was created in the generations past because of uh, the processed food and increasing use of antibiotics 
has caused a caused the mothers of the generation that started to pass on abnormal gut flora to their daughters, which has been progressively getting worse and worse, and it's been resulting. We're out of time. Result- we are out of time. Thank you for your call, John. Doctor, thank you. Have you back Friday morning. Uh, you guys have a good week. Talk to you guys all okay. later.